Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna continue taking apart my M50 block. Right behind me. Enjoy. So if you guys haven't seen the first part of this disassembly, I'm gonna link the video up there. Um, but basically, I already took apart the entire cylinder head and took out the cams, the lifted trays on the bottom below. Um, I just haven't found the time to really uh, continue taking apart the rest of the motor. But hopefully today, I'm going to try to take apart as much as I can. And I think I'm going to leave the crankcase front bolt, or aka the Jesus bolt right here, uh, for last in order to take the crankshaft out because that's going to be the most difficult thing, mainly because this is already on an engine stand. And if I were to take everything else apart, it would lighten the complete block up a little bit. So if I were to have to take it off the engine stand, I have the least amount of weight on this motor. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is make sure that I've drained all the oil out. I don't remember if I drained the oil out of this engine prior to putting it on the engine stand. So in addition to that, I want to make sure that all the coolant is out of the motor. So I'm actually going to flip it sideways to drain any remnant coolant inside the motor. Um, so I have the driest possible conditions. Uh, so I don't really spill anything or make a big mess. I'm pretty glad that I took that oil nut off because there is still oil left that's probably seeped from the top uh, mechanical assembly that's left in the oil pan. The next thing I'm going to do is take apart this bolt right here which is going to hopefully drain all the coolant from the motor once I tip it sideways. So now that I got all the fluids drained, or most of them drained, they're still dripping now that I got the engine rotated on the other side. Um, now I'm going to take off the oil pan and then hopefully it won't create too much of a mess. Um, so upon taking this motor out, there are about four bolts right here that are very fragile because they're really long in comparison to the other oil pan bolts. Just be cautious taking these off, they're right here, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so I got all the bolts off all around. I only left these two right here, one and two, just to make sure that the oil pan is separating so that if all the bolts are off, the pan wouldn't just fall off and potentially crack and hit the ground. But now that I know that you can actually just open it slightly, pry it open just very slightly, I'm just gonna slowly back out those two bolts and then just separate the oil pan. Alright, so now you can see the oil pan is off. I left the dipstick on, but you can just take that off whenever. This is the oil pump pickup, oil pump, and then that is the notorious nut that falls off in the E36 motors that can potentially have catastrophic engine failure. So if you get one of these bolts, quick tip is to find one that has a wire string on it so you can just tie it to the sprockets and not have to worry about it falling off. So I'm going to be taking off the oil pump, the chain right here, and then this pickup tube so that I can take out the pistons as well as this tray right here. You could also just go for taking off this front bolt if you have the proper tools and means to do so and then take all these assemblies out, take the first timing cover out and then move on to this step. But I don't really think it matters too much but I'll find out in just a sec. So to take out this sprocket right here, know that this is reverse thread. Just take off this bolt right here and it should pop off. And then to take off the oil pump, I believe it's just one, two and three bolts right there and then two bolts on the side right there. So as this turns, it's really cool because I'm noticing that this is basically one of the main feeds or the only feed for the entire system and it feeds straight into this one channel that distributes to the rest of the motor. And I personally just find that really cool. Let's go. 
zip tie this just to make sure the chain doesn't come out of place. All right, so now that I got the oil pump system off, I have direct access to these bolts right here. Uh, these will expose the bottom of the piston, so now I can get access to taking the pistons apart. I really like to just put the bolts back to where they originally were, just so that I remember where they go, and so I don't mix them up with any other bolts. And then if I decide to put them somewhere else in like a plastic bag or something, I can do so. This will also hopefully help me prevent any of this part from getting scathed or damaged if I were to drop the motor on the bottom. So these bolts will at least be some sort of protection, hopefully. So now I'm gonna start undoing the connector rod bolts to the pistons so that I can take the pistons out of the motor. Uh, these are E12 sockets and I'm using like an extension just to get at all of them and then hopefully push them through the top. Ooh, those are really tight. So as you can see here, I already took one of the pistons out. The bolt is actually stretched slightly and that's why it's really hard to actually loosen these bolts. But once all these are loosened, you simply pull off this bearing cap and then push the piston right out from the top. Okay, so clearly I didn't want the piston to fly out of the motor, but luckily it landed on some pieces of cardboard, so it's practically good. So piston isn't looking too shabby. I don't see any cracks, but it's just very, very dirty. Okay, so I got all six pistons are out. You can see the bare block right there, or almost bare block. So the next thing that I have to do is of course take out the crankshaft. And to do that, I'm gonna have to deal with the front timing chain and the timing case covers and sprockets and whatnot. And I'm gonna save that for our next video. So sorry for the wait for the rest of this motor and the bottom end and such, but I am going to save the crankshaft for another video because it is going to be fairly difficult to take it off. This bolt right here requires 300 foot-pounds of torque to take off, and i got to figure out a way to lock the crankshaft in order to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, quick update on what I'm doing with this motor, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.